My name is Christine and Anna, I am working in the video group today uh, for the 24-hour uh, Thinkathon. So today we were working on first capturing uh, what is actually happening at the 24-hour Thinkathon. Um, so we try to get the atmosphere here, like um, the energy of the young people being like into a topic they're really interested in. And second, of course, we also think about what is the role of video um, regarding to social inclusion and digitalization and social relation in general. My name is Felisa and I'm in the social media team. I think social media provides us with a huge platform to really bring light to a lot of causes and a lot of people that usually don't have the access to kind of promote what they're looking for or be included. So yeah, I think social media is a huge part of social inclusion. So the goal of my group is to essentially encourage young people to be involved in competitions like this, just so their voices can be heard in policy making. So on the higher level, I think governments have the responsibility to listen to people and companies, because of their influence, they also have responsibility to really stand for things that represent those who don't have a voice. My name is Asta Barande and currently I'm with the Voicing Policies Group. I think the main actors shouldn't be mainly the government, just because the government is the one that rolls out the regulations, the laws. and. They're the ones that even form new laws. So not just the politicians, but also the government would include some of like the civic people, some of like the youth. So everyone can come together as a whole and decide on a policy that would work best for the community. Uh, some of our concerns about digital policy are that uh, policies are different in different countries, which is a little problematic considering that the internet has no borders. Another concern is video surveillance in public spaces. It is supposed to be for people's safety, um, um, but in comparison to video surveillance in private places like the workplace to watch people's behavior and to make sure they're doing what they're supposed to do, um, but that's a little bit of an infringement of privacy in my opinion. Another one of our concerns is the social pressure to accept presence on social media, um, worrying about being a fuss if we don't want to be on camera or not on video because it's so normalized in our society. Respecting people who don't want to be filmed, asking for consent um, is a very simple thing to do but people don't do it. But we were curious to know in Europe we found in our research that there's this thing, it's GRDP, but we were wondering, like, did it work in Europe? Do people in Europe like that law? Did it, because Canada has like nothing. For example, how that would have impacted like Wikipedia or yeah. YouTube, where yeah. like common people, they just share content, but exactly. without sometimes like, uh, and how, that would have affected that kind of like, uh, you know, Wikipedia. But I think, um, yes, from one point of view, then people are limited in, in what they can share and see this platform which live with the content of the people, they are limited because they won't allow, be able to allow that anymore. But then, uh, and then, but then from the point of view of fake news and stuff, of course, uh, it's, uh, it's very good because, uh, um, you know, there's a, it just, it just reduces to institutions or like official newspaper just delivering the information and not just random people. So some of the concerns and problems we were looking at were how to mitigate against urban isolation so that um, people aren't isolated and just using social media within their homes and using it to actually interact with their communities as our cities are getting larger and as our cities are sprawling. And we were also trying to see how we could mitigate harassment that happens online, seeing if there were any type of policies that we could put in place to help protect people and their rights on media. Hey, I'm Alana. I'm one of the participants in the Share the Buzz group. One of my concerns relating to the ideas of digital inclusion and social relations is that we're simply not thinking about it enough. I think it's easy to overlook when you're part of part of a first world country where access to the internet is relatively abundant, but not so easy when you're part of an otherwise um, underprivileged group where access to the internet can't be taken for granted. Uh, 
Hello, my name is Tasha and I am a member in the Voicing Policies Edmonton team. And just now, my team members and I have discussed and identified solutions, probable solutions to five main problems that we have discussed in our previous presentation. First, one of them is locking down uh, accounts of deceased people or people that want to erase their digital platform, digital footprint in their platforms and how the government is able to use their power and their regulations in order to help prevent identity theft. So one of the things that we've been working on is the planning and execution of a comprehensive social media strategy that will hopefully increase participation in um, digital inclusion in future thinkathons. So one of our outcomes is that digitalization does not know any borders. So we need global digital policies for social relations. And to make the digital world as inclusive as possible, we need a diverse group of policymakers that represents the population.